Hey, Dana, are you still lounging around in bed? Gosh, your negative energy is totally killing the vibe for everyone around here. What are you talking about, Skyla? You know I can't just snap my fingers and start walking around, even if I wanted to. You should understand my condition better than anyone else, right? Ugh, you are such a pain, you know? I mean, what kind of human being can't even take care of themselves? It's like you're living the dream life, just snoozing and chilling in bed while others do all the work for you. Could you please give me a break? Feels like you and the rest of our family always have something to complain about whenever you see me. You do realize that I was involved in a terrible car accident, right? It resulted in a spinal injury that left me with a major disability and paralysis from the waist down. I didn't ask for any of this, all right? Huh. Now you're really going to talk back to your mother-in-law like that, even though you've been nothing but a total pain in the butt for this family? Don't forget who took care of you when you were injured. It was me and your father-in-law, all right? So don't go biting the hands that fed you, you ungrateful little brat. You know, I really do appreciate that you made an effort to help me during my hospital stay and treatment. It meant a lot to me. But ever since you found out that I won't be able to walk again, your whole attitude towards me has taken a nosedive. Honestly, it feels like you've been treating me with disrespect and even hurling insults my way. Do you even realize why I have to go all out with those harsh words? It's because you never bothered to make any changes. Tell me, how much longer are you going to expect me and the rest of the family to take care of your every need? We've got our own jobs to handle, you know. What are you even saying? I never asked anyone to take care of me. I actually have a helper and a housekeeper who assist me with my daily needs. They provide physical support and take care of tasks like cleaning and laundry. So I really don't cause any trouble for anyone in our family. I have everything sorted and I'm not a burden on anyone, okay? Oh, look at you, acting like not causing trouble for our family is some kind of praiseworthy achievement. How about actually doing something productive once in a while, instead of just lounging around in bed all day like a useless lump of flesh? If you keep this up, your whole body is going to turn into melted hot chocolate from lack of movement, I swear. I really do want to move around freely in the house, but that means relying on a wheelchair. Unfortunately, it's a struggle because, you see, our house is old and compact making it nearly impossible for a wheelchair to navigate through. Trust me, I wish I could move without it, but that's just not in the cards. Ha! Just what I expected. The classic excuses of lazy sloths. Hey! I want you to understand that I'm not sitting around doing nothing. My upper body isn't paralyzed. So I've been working as a freelance illustrator from the comfort of home. I'm actually taking care of all my expenses independently without needing anyone's assistance. I've got it covered, all right? Listen, you're blowing my son's hard-earned cash by keeping that housekeeper around. We don't tolerate that kind of extravagance around here, okay? Who do you think you are? The Queen of England or something? What are you talking about? I also have my personal needs. You know, without the housekeeper, no one will do my laundry and I won't have any clothes to change into. Dana, you're such a pest. Do you even realize that you've become a total annoyance to everyone around you? You're acting all high and mighty, saying you're working from home, but I bet the peanuts you earn barely cover the cost of that housekeeper. Let me ask you something. What's the point of having a housekeeper if she doesn't even do what I say? It's like having a pet rock, utterly pointless. What do you mean? I don't understand. Quit acting clueless. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Every time I asked her to clean my room or whip up some dinner, she straight up turned me down. Seriously, what kind of attitude is that? It's totally unacceptable. Well, if you asked her in a nicer way, she might help you out of pity. But let's not forget, I specifically hired Lucy to assist me with my personal needs, and I pay her from my own pocket. So if you want her to do something for you, 
you'll need to cover the extra costs. It's only fair, right? Lucy has made it pretty clear to you, so I assume you understand the situation by now. What an arrogant housekeeper indeed. If you and your fancy helper don't start fixing your attitudes, mark my words, you're both going to get the boot from this house, got it? And when that day comes, don't come crying to me about it. Consider this your fair warning. Hey, Dana. It's your sister-in-law here. I bet you've been absolutely dying without me, right? Sandra, why are you texting me all of a sudden? Something wrong? Aw, uh, come on. Why are you getting all defensive, sis? I was just trying to check in on you and see how you've been doing all this time. It's been over a year since I left the house to get married. Can you believe it? Seems like things haven't changed one bit. Well, yeah. Everything's still practically the same. So what's the deal with you? Still living it up on that same old bed, huh? <laughs> Being bedridden sucks, but let's be real, it's not too different from your pre-accident life, right? I mean, you were pretty useless back then, too. Not much has changed, to be honest. Look, if you're texting me just to say this stuff, I gotta tell you, I'm not interested at all. Like, zero interest. Not even a tiny bit. So you can keep those words to yourself, alright? Well, obviously not. You should know by now that I don't have much time to waste on idle chit-chat with you. The reason I'm texting you is because I have something important to say. Brace yourself. Starting tomorrow, I'm moving back into my parents' house and living with them again. Surprise, surprise! What? You're moving back into the house? Whoa, that's unexpected. Did something go wrong between you and your husband? How did you know about that? Yeah, something definitely went down between me and my husband. The jerk went and cheated on me. Can you believe it? He got seduced by some other woman and had the audacity to ask for a divorce. Honestly, he's been a constant pain in the neck throughout our whole marriage, so I don't see any reason to stick around in this messed up relationship. Good riddance, I say. Really? No way. Your husband actually cheated on you? I mean, he always seemed like a decent guy to me. The last few times I talked to him, he was all fired up about working hard at that big company to provide for you and your future kids. Honestly, he never struck me as the cheating type. But of course, who am I to judge? It's not your job to judge or make snarky comments about my marriage, all right? Let's get that straight. Anyway, back to the point. Consider the announcement made. I'm moving in tomorrow. And hey, do me a favor and tell your helper to give you a thorough cleaning, okay? I can only imagine how dusty and stinky you must be after all these years lying around like a sack of potatoes. Dana, you need a deep clean. You know how much I care about cleanliness, right? George, are you free at the moment? There's something I need to talk to you about. Come on now, Dana. If you're looking to start some trouble, can you at least choose a more suitable time for it? But hey, just tell me, what's bugging you? Hey George, could you do me a favor and pass a message along to your parents and sister? Can you ask them to be a bit more mindful of what they say? I mean, I'm a human being with thoughts and feelings too, you know? Their constant insults and mockery really hurt me. And it's about time they realize that. Jeez, what's the latest drama now? What did they say to you that got you all riled up and upset? Well, I suppose you're busy with work most of the time. So maybe you didn't notice. But your family's discrimination against me is crystal clear. They would call me names and say things like, You're nothing but a burden to us. You're like a parasite that just hangs around our house. It's hurtful, to say the least. Are you really blaming my parents and sister for telling the truth? What do you mean, the truth? Alright, listen up. 
You can't even handle the housework like you used to before the accident. It's like you've become a professional procrastinator, spending all day lounging in bed. I can't wrap my head around how much sleep you managed to get. If there was a competition for the world's best sleeper, you'd totally take the gold medal. No joke. Huh? What are you even talking about? Sure, I sleep at night like any other normal human being. But that doesn't mean I'm snoozing all day long. In fact, I'm busy working most of the day. So don't go assuming things, all right? So here's the deal. You're just chilling in bed, working away, and let me tell you, it's the easiest gig ever. No need to worry about that dreadful commute like I do. Okay, let me set the record straight. Yeah. It's true that I don't have to deal with the whole commuting hassle like you mentioned, but don't get it twisted. My job ain't a walk in the park like you made it sound. I work hard just like everyone else, trying to make ends meet while taking care of myself. So you and your family better not be throwing shade and making fun of me for it. All right, Dana, I'm gonna be straight up with you. Here's the deal. My family ain't too thrilled with you because you're not pitching in around the house, even though you're my wife and all. It's no surprise they're throwing around the useless label. And you? Do you think that I'm useless? Hey, chill out a bit, alright? Don't take it so personally. You gotta find a way to handle it without getting all sensitive. Life's tough, and if you stress over every little thing, you ain't gonna survive. George, what's up with you? Seriously, you've been lacking support and it feels like you couldn't care less about me. Like, not even a tiny bit. Can you please try to be more understanding and show some sympathy for the emotional and physical pain that I'm going through? Do you even realize that I often end up crying alone with nobody by my side? All right, listen here, Mrs. Crybaby. If you're feeling all sad and depressed in this house, why don't you just get off your butt and go back to where you came from? No way. Are you for real? Please understand something. You're my only family, you know? I don't have any siblings, and my parents have already passed away. I literally have nowhere else to call home. You're a total failure, Dana. You know what? My family is right. What do you mean? What are they right about? My family and I all agree that I'd be better off with a younger and healthier wife than you. What? Are you really telling me this right now? Look, I've been thinking about this, and it's important for me to have kids to keep my family legacy going. But with you, it seems impossible. I'm sorry, but things aren't working out between us anymore. I think it's time we consider a divorce. Well, I see where they're coming from. If you believe it's for the best that we go our separate ways, then I won't argue against it. Marriage does require effort from both sides, doesn't it? All right, cool. It's great that you got the situation figured out so fast. But hey, no need to hate me, all right? I'm just an innocent guy here being a good husband to a not-so-great wife. Instead, you can direct that hate towards yourself for having such a useless body, if that's what floats your boat. So when are you planning to move out? I can actually move out there as early as tomorrow. I don't have too many belongings to worry about, so it won't be a big hassle. Truth be told, I've been considering moving out for quite some time now, even before you mentioned divorce. That's why I've already found a new place to stay. Wait, hold up. So you're telling me you've been contemplating divorce even before I brought it up? Seriously? How dare you? Do you think I'm some kind of joke or what? What do you expect? You're not exactly the loving and caring husband I once knew. It feels like you're always taking your sisters and parents' side constantly belittling me and my situation. So what's the point of staying in this marriage? Once I'm out of the picture, you should be the one concerned, not me. Are you really okay with me leaving? Well, no worries on my end. 
I'll just go ahead and find someone who's a better fit for me. As a matter of fact, all the people I know have been telling me to divorce you so I can find a superior wife. Just think long and hard about it. Will you be able to make a living without me, George? Come on, Dana, you're just spouting nonsense. Let me fill you in. Dad's retirement fund is still intact, and my sister mentioned she received a hefty settlement from her divorce. Money won't be a concern for us for a while, so I won't have to rely on you anymore. I'm glad to hear that, George. If that's what you want, then let's accept that this is the end for both of us. As for the divorce process, don't worry. Nowadays, everything can be done online. Once all the necessary paperwork is completed, I'll provide you with the divorce papers. Oh well, do whatever you want. If you want to move out starting tomorrow, go ahead. No problem. Just make sure you take all of your stuff with you, because once you're out, you're not setting foot in my house again. Got it? Hey, Dana. So, I see you've made your decision to move out, huh? Well, let me make it clear. It's only you who needs to get the heck out of my house, got it? Don't even think about trying to drag my son along with you. That plan won't fly, you know? Can't you see all these years you've been living with him? You've just been holding him back. If you had even an ounce of decency left, you'd let my son go and allow him to find his own happiness. Do you actually think I'm going to beg George to stay with me? Come on. I'm not wasting my time on something so pointless. Just so you know, I still have my own job and can take care of myself just fine, with or without you in the picture. Do you even have a job? Who in their right mind would hire a disabled person to work? Well, I bet it's just some crappy job at some shady company, huh? Anyway, get out of my house as soon as you can, you worthless piece of garbage. Sure, you may be paying for the housekeeper, but let's face it, you don't make much money anyways. I bet you'll have nothing left after paying the housekeeper's bill. It's just a matter of time before you can't afford to eat and starve to death. <laughs> oh, just you wait until I eventually move out. We'll see who gets the last laugh then. You freeloading parasite who spends money on helpers, get the heck out. I've had enough of your face in this house, and I don't want to see it for another minute. Hey, Dana. You there? Why are you ghosting my texts and calls? I've been trying to reach you because I've got something important to talk about. Please stop giving me the silent treatment like that. Um, hello? Skylock? Finally, you answered. Why haven't you ever replied to my texts and calls? Do you even realize how worried sick I've been about you? I was freaking out, thinking something awful happened to you, dear. Thanks for your concern, but I'm doing great. No need to worry about me, really. Oh, well, that's awesome to hear. By the way, I've got something really urgent to discuss with you. It's an emergency, so please lend me your ear, okay? So, what's the deal? Can you please get to the point quickly? Did you not bother to read any of my texts? I've asked you this more than once, you know. Listen up, Dana. This is a serious conversation. Do you still want to live with us like you used to? Excuse me? Why are you bringing this up all of a sudden? Last time I heard from you, you were hurling insults at me, calling me a parasite or a piece of garbage. I don't think anyone would want to live with a so-called parasite, right? Oh, come on, Dana. Are you still holding a grudge against me for that? It's been over a freaking year. You should have let it go by now. Look, I've been doing some serious thinking and I've come to realize that it was wrong for me to leave you, a person with physical disabilities, all alone. Oh, so now you suddenly realize that? Well, guess what? It's way too late for that, you know. I'm already moved out and I made it crystal clear to you that I would never come back. What are you going on about? Quit being so stubborn and listen up. If you agree to move back in with us, I promise we'll take proper care of you so you won't have to worry about anything anymore. No thanks. I'm actually doing fantastic on my own. My helper takes care of most of the chores around the house like cleaning, laundry, and shopping. Plus, 
Lucy has been a tremendous help with my work. She used to be a successful businesswoman at a big company before she got married. And she's incredibly tech savvy. Actually, she's not just my housekeeper anymore. She's managing my business and finances too. So as you can see, there are no issues whatsoever with me living by myself. Um, about that business, is it true that you're earning more than my son, George? Well, yeah, I actually earn way more than George. But when it came to the divorce, he conveniently seemed to forget about that fact. Look, I know this is hard to believe, but George told me that you're making up to $15,000 every month. Can you confirm if that's true or not, Dana? Well, you don't really need to know all the nitty gritty details about my income because I consider it a personal matter. Just keep in mind that when I was living with you, my earnings alone were covering all of your living expenses. But why was I completely left in the dark about this? If I had known that you were contributing so much to our family, I never would have asked you to move out. You know, it was all George's idea. At the time, his company wasn't doing well, so his pay was cut. Fortunately, my income has been increasing, so I offered to help as a token of gratitude for the assistance you gave me after I got into that car accident. He told me not to tell you anything since he thought you'd worry if you found out his salary dropped. So... George had been pulling the wool over my eyes about his salary all this time? Turns out it wasn't him, but you who had been taking care of all the bills around the house? Yeah, it was me. But after three years, it seemed like George conveniently forgot that I was the one footing the bill for most things around the house. He had the nerve to confidently ask for a divorce, saying he wouldn't have to worry about money because Sandra received a hefty sum from her husband as compensation after their divorce. What? This is absolutely nuts. Did you know that Sandra lied about all of that? She didn't receive any compensation from her husband. In fact, she was the one who cheated on him and even swiped his cash. Afterwards, Sandra's husband sued her and demanded that she return the exact amount she stole from him. Not only that, he even slapped her with a hefty compensation charge. Well, I guess that's kind of karma for both Sandra and George. How could you say such a thing? Now my precious daughter, Sandra, is completely heartbroken. She eloped with her new boyfriend, but he ended up dumping her. And now she came back crying with even more debts. Now she's back in tears and drowning in even more debt. Listen, Dana, why don't you just remarry George? If you did that, wouldn't it solve all the financial problems my family is facing? No way. Do you think I'm some kind of fool? I already knew about his affair with that girl from the hostess bar. There's no chance I would ever consider getting back together with an unfaithful man like him. Wait, you knew? Please, just hear me out. Let me explain the whole situation to you. Of course I did. In fact, that's the main reason why he insisted on getting a divorce from me, right? Just so he could be with that girl? Look, it's not what you're assuming. They weren't in a relationship at all. George was just a regular customer of hers, like any other customer, you know? My son only loves you. You're the only one he truly cares about. Please, consider coming back into his arms, Dana. He really misses you way more than you can imagine. Nope. There's no way I'm coming back to live with a jobless man who once cheated on me. As far as I know, his company went bankrupt six months ago. And now he's struggling to find a job. Wait, how do you know all this? Well, never mind that. If you're aware of our struggles, why don't you lend a helping hand during these tough times? My poor son can't even find a decent job for himself. He's lost all confidence and has become a recluse. On top of that, with Sandra and George living with us, they've completely drained my husband's retirement savings. Now we're left with nothing but debts. Wow, that sounds like an incredibly challenging situation to be dealing with. Good luck with all that. Oh, thank you for acknowledging that, Dana. I've always recognized you as a wonderful daughter-in-law. You're the only one who truly understands and supports me. Listen, if you just come back and live with us, everything will be all right. We can go back to the way things were before. What do you mean by everything will be all right? Are you expecting me to come back and shoulder all the financial burdens like I used to before? It's quite audacious coming from someone who had the nerve to insult and kick me out of the house. Listen, Dana, if I had known things would end up like this, I would have never let you and George go through the divorce. Please, my dear daughter-in-law, I sincerely apologize for everything I've done to you. Come back to us. Let's make things right again. I promise you, both my son and I have undergone complete transformation. From now on, I'll do whatever it takes to love and care for you. 
Honestly, hearing you say these words gives me the creeps. Sorry to say this, but it's way too late for apologies now. Besides, no one can change so drastically in just one year. And deep down, you know it too. Enjoy dealing with all the debts. Remember, you reap what you sow. This mess is of your own making. And now you have to face the consequences. Shortly after that, my former in-laws had to sell their house to cover their children's debts. Unfortunately, the house was old and had little value, so they didn't make much money from it after deducting the cost of clearing the land. Additionally, the location wasn't favorable. As far as I know, George was still living with his parents. Not only that, he had started drowning his sorrows in alcohol. Sandra, on the other hand, expressed no interest in working and had become a couch potato, resulting in weight gain. The four adults ended up sharing a small, inexpensive apartment with just one room, and during a challenging life, they had to work long hours and part-time jobs, leaving them exhausted. Well, I suppose Skyla finally got a taste of what it's like to live with the very parasite she raised, her own two children. But their karma didn't end there. I made the decision to sue them all for the emotional distress caused by their verbal abuse. In fact, I have recorded and documented all the abusive language they directed at me. When my lawyer pursued compensation, Skyla tearfully begged for it to go away somehow. They complained about their current situation, but there was no way I would accept their pleas. I'm now focused on developing my career and have received numerous offers to illustrate picture books. I've been through a lot, but I'm determined to continue living my life with a positive outlook and not take things too seriously.